I'm out. We had a, a the, the couple, uh, the man and woman, the guy came in town. So what's so tough is when we're around each other, it's hard for each person to take from the other person. Now he's a guest, and he brings us a gift. You know, like so. So we try to sneak in town. Because if, if he knows we're in town, he'll try to cover our hotel and everything. So last time we went in town, we didn't tell him until after we got there and we already made our arrangements. Why? Because his cup is running over. So he's not hoarding. You know, he's driving. And I was like, oh, you know, I, I, I'll get the gas. He starts singing. I, I, and I was, I was trying to talk to him. He just kept singing. And then he, he filled up his tank, got back in the car. He's like, what was Keith talking about? Why? His cup is running over. See, God wants our cup running over, so we're not as, 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 as like our time, you know, like we, we don't even, God don't even get no time because our cup ain't running over. We, we don't, we're in labor, not favor. We're not, in a, we're not in a position God wants us to be. We're committing spiritual suicide. We're killing the real us, the obedient us, and we're conforming to the disobedient person. And we're, but every day you wake up, you want fulfillment. You, you, but, but you think the world, what the world has set up, that they say this, when you get here, you'll be fine. So they keep, they got you chasing that carrot. But look at all the time and investment and the resources. Count all the resources you spent on what the world has set up as this gets you fulfilled. And imagine if you invested that into God's kingdom and just been ob obedient to God. Imagine, you know, some of that stuff is costing you. I'm just saying, it's just costing you. It's costing you, it's, 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 it's suicide. Spiritual suicide. Which, see, the scripture says, see, when you're disobedient, you can end up taking your literal life and your spiritual life. But God says, I have meant for none to perish. That's God's plan. I have meant for none to perish. He says, so you can end up, and see, not only that, your purpose to save lives to impact lives. But you, you can't impact lives if you're dead, if you're like a zombie. You just, you walk. So you're existing like, there's it's trees out there right now and they're existing, but they have no leaves on it. This is 80, it's it's going to be 80 degrees today. You won't see no leaves, no fruit, no nothing. What do we call those trees? We call them dead, right? But they're existing. You don't want to just be existing. The walking dead, you want to be producing like a tree planted by rivers of water, bringing forth fruit in your season. You know, and the only way you do that is to get back to the obedient you. Yeah. Obedience, we talked about this the last couple of weeks, obedience is not an option. We look at it as it's optional. See, think about it. You want fulfillment, but you're being disobedient. What do y'all call it? Oxymoron? It's like, it's like, it's like, and I'm not, I'm not, uh, how can I say, I'm not condemning anyone. This may convict somebody, but I'm not going to condemn you. But it's like smoking a cigarette saying I want to live. The pack say it'll kill you. It's, on a, it's written on a pack. So that's not even like, oh, because you're a Christian. Ain't got nothing to do with a Christian. It, listen, I stopped smoking before I started living for God. And basically all I did is I smoked a half a cigarette, went to play ball, and couldn't breathe. I said, hold on a second. Ain't nothing supposed to be controlling me like that. So I stopped smoking. That's how I stopped smoking. I, the same thing, I was, I, I was getting high. I got high for uh, this particular day. It was like 20 hours. We spent thousands of dollars. I said, let me get this right. I spent thousands of dollars waiting for more. We was, we was in, uh, I was in, in New York. And a guy was going, to, he was either going to Bronx or Mount Kisco to pick up more. Had to be to work in an hour. I said, let me get this right. We've been getting high for 20 hours. We just spent thousands of dollars, and I'm waiting for more. I said, man, ain't no satisfaction out of this stuff. I didn't say stuff, but I said, ain't no satisfaction out of this. I said, man, forget this. See, because I was like, nothing should have that much control over you. You, you, you see what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's, we, it's, I understand I'm a Christian, I'm a pastor. I, I get all that. Could, could we just... What I just told you, I, were no Bible verses that day sitting in that room. I'm, I know what the word says, and I can give you chapter and verse. 
on, on why it's not a benefit to you and why it's actually affecting your obedience because you have to, to be obedient, you have to hear God, right? You can't hear God if the signal's been cut off. And then if, even if you hear him, are you hearing him accurately? So you, you get fulfillment based on accurate obedience, not partial obedience. There's no such thing as partial obedience. Go back and look at, uh, the scripture says in 1, Corinthians, 1 Samuel uh, 15, 22, uh, when uh, Samuel came up to Saul, he said, it's all this noise. He said, what I, he said, I hear sheep. He said, yeah. He said, what we did was we kept the best sheep for God. And we kept some gold and stuff and put that over there. We just look out for God. He says, God would have rather obedience than sacrifice. What did God tell you? Like, God didn't give you instructions for, for you to filter them. God knows exactly what he wants. And he told you exactly what he wants. And you figure you can add to what God wanted? See, so he, that was partial obedience. So it wasn't obedience at all. He lost his throne because of that. He lost his throne because he wasn't accurate in his obedience. Now, the only way you're going to be accurate, you got to hear from God clearly. And that's what's happening sometimes. We're, we're, we're making choices outside the lines and something will happen. The goal is to bring you back inside the lines. But see, we're so smart, we'll tolerate what's trying to make us uncomfortable. No, it's trying to make you uncomfortable to get you back inside the lines, not for you to, to, to figure out a way of resisting it. Uh, okay, I had surgery. I don't even remember now. I mean, last year, April, on a herniated disc. But before I even went to the surgery, I went to a chiropractor, and, you know, he was doing all types of stress stuff. He said, uh, you have a high tolerance of pain, don't you? I said, yeah, how you know? He said, because you could have got this taken care of. Long. It would have never got to the herniated stage if you would have taken care of it. I was playing in pain. I just thought I wasn't stretching right. It's like, well, let me stretch my hips more or something like that. I'm, so, and once I got warm, I just play. And then when it was over, ice up and come back at it the next day. But the whole time, I'm living with pain that I wasn't supposed to be tolerating. I never was supposed to be tolerating that pain. I wasn't designed to be friends with pain. But I, but, but I got used to it. I developed an immunity to it. So, so the whole time, my disc was deteriorating, getting worse and worse. When I could have, I could have given to some therapy. I would have did the stuff I'm doing now. Uh, I did that a long time ago. Oh, but that's happening in some of y'all lives. You're tolerating stuff that's not even supposed to be a part of your life. You think it's okay. You actually think because you're okay without fulfillment, you're going to be okay without fulfillment. <laughs> but because I'm a pastor and a part of my design is being a seer, meaning that to get out ahead of you guys, I'm trying to, I'm trying to prevent you dealing with the, the pain that you don't want to deal with. See, right now you have the pain you want to tolerate, but there's a pain coming if you keep going down that road that you're not going to want to tolerate. So I'm trying to prevent that. So you can jump off of that disobedient train now and actually, you know, deal with whatever the consequences is, get back on the obedient train, and start moving towards fulfillment. Because ultimately, what you're craving is not temporary success. It's not temporary pleasure. It's not temporary comfort. It's fulfillment. And that's, that's the only way you get that is be the real you, the obedient you. That's the only way you're getting it. All right, so... <laughs> Woo! All right. All right, so <laughs> I got to calm down. I was just gone. I was just, just gone, gone. All right, so listen, this is re rebellion is like an allergy to fulfillment. Um, because what it does is it rejects or it, it, it self destructs. You know, you ever like self to blow everything up? Well, okay. You know, since we're still growing and we have newer people than when I shared this before. That was how I lived. So I would get to a point, and if it got crazy, boom, self-destruct button. And, and different than some other people, I wouldn't complain either. I would deal with the consequences. I was like, man, I don't care about nothing. I don't need none of this. I'll blow it all up. Or what was my line? Uh, forget it then. 
Just forget it then. So, or, and then like, like if some of y'all got on my nerves or something, oh, I'm blowing that up quick. Boom! Like, you know, I just, I, hey, you know how with the movie The Professional, you know, when he, when he went out, like he hit a switch and the whole, his whole, his whole crib blew up. Everybody else. I, I would be like that, just blowing it all up. We just start from scratch. I'll show them. Who's being affected by that? Me. I almost did it at the last ministry I was at. Just, they was, they, when they, things just wasn't going a certain way. So I was like, uh, I said, oh, I don't need none of this. I don't need none of this. I don't need none of y'all. Remember, I grew up in a foster home. I'm, I'm used to being on my own. So I was like, I don't need, listen, I ain't the one. And, and I, I went to the button, you know, like the president go to the button and pull up the red switch. I pulled up the switch and everything like what? What? Yeah, we all going to be blown up then. And, and the Holy Spirit was like, no, I said, I said, I don't need to deal with none of this. That was my statement. Holy Spirit was like, but I need you to deal with it. He said, Keith, you can't do this again. He said, I need you to embrace it. I need you to take it. I need you to handle it. I need you to move beyond this one. Because you just not push the button this time. And I'm glad I didn't, but I, I show, boom, self-destruct. See, see, but see, that would have been rebellion because God has a purpose for me. It's, yeah, I was being treated unfair, but the scripture says in 1 Peter 2, it says when you've been treated unfair and you take it patiently, he said, you should take it. No, he said, no, you've been treated, yeah, you've been treated fair and you take it patiently. He said, you should take it. You've been treated right. He says, but when you are treated unfair and you take that patiently, he says, that's thanks worthy towards God. That's a good conscience towards God. You saying, God, these people tripping, vengeance is yours. I know you love me. You got it. But I'm going to keep on moving. That's what Jesus had to do. He was being treated unfair. But see, Jesus, had, Jesus couldn't let him being treated unfair stop him from being obedient. Because see, if he would have reacted to what they wanted him to do, the whole purpose of him being unfair to get him off track, to get him off the line, to get him out of being obedient, to get him disobedient. To use all that was in him to retaliate, right? Not to elevate. That's the whole purpose. But that's rebellion. You rejecting the very thing that God has for you. Jesus was in the garden go, hey, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. So he thought it, but he was like, no, 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 I'm not. Okay, but maybe, maybe all this I'm seeing right now, I could be missing something. I want to make sure I'm obedient. So... If this, if, if, this, if this was just like, a, we just playing around as a joke, you want to see how much I could take? Okay, good. So, so am I done? Because it seemed like I done went through enough right now for everybody. So could we just like take me back to heaven? He says, but nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. Now, if it's not your will for me to, you know, roll up out of this garden and just shut this whole thing down, he says, I'll just deal with it. Cause I'm, but I'm hoping you plan about that cross. I thought, I hope that's like a joke. That's the, we're not really going to do that. <laughs> and then you're going to leave me for a period of time because I'm going to take on the sins of the world. That I, I thought, I hope you're going to do that Abraham thing. You know, like bring somebody else, let them get on the cross. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. But if I have to, I would rather be obedient than to be disobedient because disobedience, obedience is not an option. Look at Philippians 2. Hope I was supposed to be at Philippians 2 already. Well, go to Philippians 2 and I'll give you this, this, this piece. So, so I don't know how many more weeks I'm going to teach on this. But, okay, so you got rebellion. That's an allergy to fulfillment. You have manipulation and, and, and fear. And, and what that does is that's, 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 uh, that's trying to control fulfillment. And the dangerous thing is for us not to realize something. Fulfillment can't be controlled. So, 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 so this. So now we know people try to manipulate and control you. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about you. So I'm not talking about the people that try to manipulate. I'm talking about you trying to manipulate. You trying to hustle. You trying to gain, thinking God don't see your heart. See, you trying to control fulfillment. You can't control fulfillment. The fulfillment is your cup running over. How you gonna control that? The whole purpose is for it to spill over on everybody else anyway. But see, we so like if fulfillment looked like it's coming. We be trying to figure out how can I just control this thing so I can determine how much of it comes out at a time. No, no, no. It's going to flood you. It's going to overtake you. It's going to submerge you. See, it's not for you to control. See, that's the...